Hello again. So here we're going to introduce the idea of the Brevet lattices. Now this is a very nice diagram from Dexter Perkins' online mineralogy text, and it shows all of the possible options. But let's first start with the idea of what is a lattice. So you normally think of a lattice as maybe kind of this cross-hatched thing that you have in the backyard and you grow uh, grapevines on it or something. Uh, well, here in the world of crystallography, and we'll draw my favorite type of crystal, something with eight atoms and a roughly cubic geometry to it. So for us in crystallography, the Brevet lattices are a collection of so-called nodes. These nodes are strictly thought of as a mathematical point. You can think of them as atoms. Uh, some people don't like it when you call them atoms. Um, they can be, uh, there's good reason for that. They can be uh, molecular clusters, but uh, strictly the way they're thought of is as kind of a mathematical point. But uh, certainly when people think about these nodes, they are thinking of them as atoms. Uh, so was Brevet in 1849. Uh, he talks about atoms and molecules. Even in the mid-19th century, the idea of the atomic theory of matter was uh, developing and becoming accepted, at least in some narrow circles. So when Brevet was developing this idea, he certainly had atoms and molecules in mind. So in any case, the lattice is essentially, for a given crystal, it is the smallest repeatable unit. So if we have some crystal-like quartz and we want to make quartz, actually halite's a better example here. If we want to make halite, what is the smallest repeatable unit that we would need? And it would probably be a lot, a, a lot like this, it would probably be exactly like this, that all we need are the sodium and chlorine atoms arranged in a cube, and then we could take those cubes and then stack them on top of one another or side to side, and we could build this thing out infinitely to make as large a halite crystal as we would like. So it's the fundamental structural building blocks. That's what the Brevet lattices are. So a lattice essentially is uh, this node of atoms. Uh, we'll classify them a little bit differently based on whether there's atoms in the center of the lattice or on the sides. But in terms of these building blocks, these fellows here, there should be 14 of them. Uh, they are the so-called Brevet lattices, which are mathematically, well, they're called Brevet lattices because they were devised by Brevet. They are the only building blocks that are allowable to build out any of the crystal systems that we've discussed, any natural crystal uh, that you might find in nature. So any crystal that you might find It'll fall into one of the six crystal systems that we've discussed in another video, and it will have building blocks whose smallest units are going to be one of these 14 types. So we talked about the triclinic group. There's only one Brevet lattice for those kinds of minerals, and it looks like this fellow here. On the other hand, if you have crystals that are in the monoclinic system, there are two kinds of Brevet lattices. You can have a primitive lattice, that's why they have a little P here, and the primitive just means that we have points at the corners, or you can have this so-called C-centered. So the way they've oriented it here, the C-axis is going back um, from front to back. That's a little bit different than what we've talked about earlier when we usually write A, B, C, and the C vertical. So in this case, the, the C is uh, horizontal. But that's what the C stands for. So it's, uh, it's a C-centered lattice. There's an atom in the middle of that face. Uh, for orthorhombic, we've got a couple of different options. We can have a primitive lattice where we just have atoms or molecules at the corner. We can have a body-centered lattice. That's what the I means. So I is equal to body-centered. And what that means in terms of the atoms is that there's an atom smack dab in the middle of the cell. So there it is, and we call it an I. And then here, the C axis is now shown vertically. We can have a C uh, we can have an atom or a molecular cluster that is situated along the middle of the uh, face that is perpendicular to C, or we can put atoms on all of the faces. So that F over there, F just means face-centered. 
And so face-centered means that we have an atom or a molecular cluster or a mathematical point, if you prefer, on every single face instead of in the middle. And then for tetragonal, there's two other fellows here. You can have uh, body-centered or primitive. With hexagonal, we have a couple of options. And then with cubic, we've got three options, the primitive, a body-centered, and then a face-centered. So every natural crystal, anything that you might find in nature or even make in the lab, uh, if it's a crystal in structure with long-range atomic order, we can br uh, break it down into one of these 14 Brevet lattices.